Thousands of Cubans have died at the hands of terrorist groups working out of the US. In 1998, at the request of the FBI, Cuba handed over information about the activities of the groups. But instead of the terrorist leaders being charged, five Cuban nationals were arrested in Miami for gathering information about terrorist plots against their country. These men were to become known as the Miami Five. Our experience has shown that the worst thing that can happen to anyone who is in an American prison is to be alone and without support on the outside. For the families, they're also being punished together with their loved ones. It's very difficult to get visas and they're lucky to see um, their loved ones every 12 to 18 months. And in the case of two of the family members, Adriana, wife of Gerardo, and Olga, the wife of René, they have been denied visas on 10 consecutive occasions. Yo por supuesto no soy un peligro ni para la seguridad de Estados Unidos ni para la seguridad de ningún país, mucho menos para cualquier otra persona. For nearly 50 years, Miami-based terrorists opposed to the Cuban government have targeted Cuba. In the uh, early 1960s when I was in the CIA, we all knew of the uh, the sabotage and the terrorism program that was going on against Cuba. Of course, we didn't call it terrorism at that time. Uh, we in the CIA called them operations for the liberation of Cuba. This 45-year war against Cuba, undeclared war against Cuba, nearly 3,500 Cubans have been killed. More than 2,000 Cubans have been disabled for life. In 1996, the FBI approached Cuba to seek information about the terrorist attacks. Pronto llega un mensaje oficial de Washington proponiendo que Cuba reciba a una delegación de especialistas, incluyendo oficiales del FBI, para recibir información sobre estas actividades para ellos actuar. Vinieron acá y se les entregó mucha información, absolutamente nada. Eh, acción. Lo único que ocurrió después fue el arresto de los cinco compañeros que, que tuvo lugar unos meses después de, de esa reunión en La Habana. As well as the treatment of family members, the case itself has outraged legal opinion and human rights groups around the world. In 2010, Amnesty International wrote to the U.S. Attorney General raising serious concerns about the impartiality and the fairness of the trial against the Miami Five. One of America's leading human rights lawyers defended the Five. There were violations that occurred right from the start to the finish. The arrest and the manner of the arrest. The 17 months in isolation, completely unnecessary. No bail, not necessary in this case. Accumulating the charges. Seven months later, adding a charge of conspiracy to commit murder. Placing the trial in Miami, where the government knew the defendants could not get a fair trial. New evidence has just come to light that at the time of the trial, the US government paid journalists in Miami thousands of dollars to write negative stories. But while these five men have suffered from this highly political trial, the families have had to get on with their lives without their loved ones. Quiero decirle que desde comenzó la lucha que nos enteramos de esta situación, todos los familiares de ellos cinco nos unimos para luchar y todos parecemos una gran familia. In October 2011, René was released from prison, but he must remain in Miami on parole for three years. We see René now released after 13 years who sits in Florida, potentially under harm, and again, his wife not being allowed to see him. Uh, the fact that uh, Olguita has been denied the visa again uh, shows how brutal the treatment by the U.S. government has been. For me, is uh, on the one side, you have the happiness of being with your family, with your people, but on the other side, you, you know that your brothers are still in prison, you know that this, the injustice continues. But on the other hand, I realized that happiness won't be full until they are out of prison and together with me in Cuba. One of the real travesties of the case has been the media silence that British and Irish unions have been working to break. We have to continue this fight until justice prevails. And I believe one day, with the power of ordinary people, with the power of 
British and Irish trade unions with the support of the American trade unions and the American people, justice will prevail and those five individuals will be reunited with their families.